Hello, welcome to Midweek Moment here at First Christian Church, Disciples of Christ in Mount Carmel, Illinois. Today, I want to talk about the value of singular focus. It seems that we are living in a world that values multitasking. I can't tell you how many job announcements include must be able to multitask in their list of required skills. Let's parse this paragraph for the deeper meaning. Multitasking simply means you are switching your attention back and forth between tasks, sometimes with only a moment's notice. The inherent problem in this mode of operation is you lose focus. Every time you switch from one task to another, your mental acuity to deal with each task goes down. Darren Hardy suggests in his motivational uh, talk about focus that each time you switch from one task to another, your brain's capacity to deal with either drops by about 5%. So the upshot of multitasking is that you get to do a lot of things with mediocrity. Question, would you give up 20 points of IQ to be able to have it said of you, boy, he could do four things poorly better than anybody I know. We as a society over the last couple of decades have lost the ability to concentrate with singular focus because we have placed such value on multitasking. Yet Steve Jobs and most high achieving CEOs prized singular focus as the one trait that they have <clears throat> developed that allows them and their enterprise to excel above the crowd. Many places in the Bible speak to this. Matthew 6, 24 tells us, no one can serve two masters for he will either hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. When we try to multitask, we are trying to serve a new master every time we shift our focus from one task to another. When we attend to something that is high on our list of priorities, we tend to devote ourselves to that priority. Then we get interrupted by a drop-in or a phone call or an email, and we become annoyed by the intrusion. Irrespective of the cause, when we finally do get back to our original priority, we have to stop and think, where was I? Then we find we lost something in the shift. We were in the moment, as it were. The interruption stole the moment. We come up with something close, but not the cigar. In losing the original thought, our focus led us to, we end up settling instead of excelling. We split the difference at the altar of multitasking. Chris Voss, an expert in negotiation, eschews splitting the difference as a compromise that simply doesn't work. He describes it in the following way. A woman wants her husband to wear black shoes with his suit, but her husband prefers brown shoes, so they compromise. And he wears, you guessed it, one black shoe and one brown shoe. Is this the best outcome? No, as a matter of fact, it's the worst possible outcome. Joshua in chapter 24 said, put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Choose this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua, in terms of modern common parlance, went all in, and in doing so without reservation, compromise, or dilution, arrived at the best and only solution to serve his God and his family. Likewise, sin is a distraction that interrupts the focus of a godly life by drawing us away from the one true master. Jesus said, here I am. I have come to do your will. 
He set aside burnt offerings and offers himself to atone for our sins. It is the perfect uncompromising solution. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us the courage to confront evil with uncompromising truth and action. Your truth, which you have taught us since the beginning of the life you gave us, which demands we reject the sin, but love the sinner as ourselves. In your holy name we pray. Amen.